Hey everybody, the Bong is back. Welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Mario Gives Up, brought to you by GameAnyone.com. Okay, we're still in World 3, and I cleared out most of the forest, so now let's do Boo Hoo. And you know I don't like ghost houses, especially ones that got secret exits. Alright, let's go. Let's see how we're gonna do this. So far, it doesn't seem that confusing at first. Oh, I see the exit already. It's a bit surprising. Question is, how the hell do I get there? Looks like I might need a P-switch of some sort in order to make that work. Yeah, it looks like I'll need a P-switch to get to the other side. Now let's see if we can find one nearby. So far, it doesn't seem that challenging. Maybe a bit more open-ended than most ghost houses, but there's still room for confusion, and that was a pretty bad move on my part. Maybe if a, duck, a light ducking jump could have got me past the boo, but it's too late to think about that now. Oh, there's the P-switch. Awesome. Alright, do I take it with me? I suppose I should just check it out. Aha! Wait. If I remember from practice, the secret exit's actually through that, that pipe over there. But I need another P-switch. Those coins should still be obtained, though, once I go back to the room. I hope so. Because I'd really hate to feel I need to take two P-switches with me at once. I find it so hard to get that move to work. I, I missed that Yoshi coin. Not that I need it anyway, Jesus, Colette NL180, stop texting like a dozen times! I'll answer them later, I promise. Oh, dear God. I do need both P-switches. Alright, let's see how we're going to make this work. Wait, that's right, the P-switch over there. Can I still get that? I should be able to. Wait, this'll work. Well, that didn't, of course. You know, you gotta stay alive. I just had to use the P-switch from that room just to tick clear out those coins. And then go over there for the other P-switch. As opposed to trying to take two P-switches, which I can't do very well. I mean, I could do it, it just takes a few times. And I'd rather not bother. Instead, I'll just do things the tedious way. <laughs> so just going back and forth. So I gotta take this P-switch with me. And I can probably just use that to get to the regular exit. You know what? Let me do that first to get it out of the way. So what I have to do is just use the P-Switch over here. And there we go. Nothing to it. Beautiful. Oh, and it's going to take me to the cave as well. Eh, I'll save that for later. Instead, let's get the secret exit. Now that we know we can get there. It doesn't even seem that hard, actually. Aside from our 90s, actually making ghost houses... Quite easy compared to some other hacks, where their puzzles are very, very annoying and often repetitive. But that's not the case here, thankfully. So, let's get the secret exit now that we know how to do it. Obviously, I'm going to leave those coins there, because they actually serve as a guide for where the secret is. Therefore, I want to come back to that area with a P-Switch. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, I do need a P-Switch, that's why I'm going in here. To take the P-Switch from this place. So, let's get to that. Beautiful. Got the Yoshi coin, not that it's necessary. I've already missed a couple. Not that I'm really trying hard to get them. Because, well, I only got like 42 lives and I'm not even finished the third world yet. What have I got to worry about? Am I going to find like one level that requires me to have 43 lives in order to even enter? Not likely. Imagine if that actually happens. Like, damn you, game! You read my mind. Got a life of your own. 
Okay, so now let's head all the way back to those coins that I decided not to get. Otherwise, I'll just forget where to lay the P-Switch. They only serve as a guide. They're not really required to get the secret exit. It just helps to help you remember where you gotta lay it. Like, over here. Alright, now let's get a move on. Uh, seems like a bit of a cutoff there. On that, like, roof area, or top of the wall. Just doesn't feel natural. But, it doesn't matter. Because we're out! Oh, another level! Deadly to the touch! Just like me. Oh, wait. No, ladies, I want you to touch me! You see this big skull block here? If anything touches it, you will die. I mean, anything! Wait. So, what happens if a Koopa shell touches it? Will that still kill me? It does! Oh my god! So yeah, I don't even have to touch the block. An enemy can touch it, and I will still die. As if that block is directly connected to my life force only. So the best way to deal with paratroopers is to spin jump on them. That way their unwinged form will not land on the blocks. That's a very scary gimmick to have anything touch the block and you will die from it. So basically, I have to kill enemies with a spin jump as opposed to just leaving them alone. I hope that's the last of that problem. Oh god, it's not. What the hell?! The enemies can be dead and it will still kill me?! Oh, that is just effed up here. That enemy was killed! And yet, it still hurts me! That blows my mind. What else? Okay, lava can touch it, and that'll be okay. At least that's a nice change of pace compared to like almost everything killing me. Huh? Oh, I gotta wait. There. I hope that's the last of it. It is. Alright. Huh, oh, the other Yoshi coin. Whatevs. That was actually a very interesting level. I like that gimmick. It really challenges ya. You know, let's do bonus two. Let's go. Ah, uh, the Kulix background again. Okay, I've heard this music before. I think it had to be from a Kirby game. Could be wrong, though. Likely it was something for the Game Boy. I just wish I remembered. But it is familiar to me. Aw, oh, damn. Okay, there was a big risk, but it worked. God, I'm scratching my head for this track. At least this place had a checkpoint compared to bonus one. Like, it was either Mario or Kirby or anything for the Game Boy. Is it Kirby's Block Ball? I don't remember. I know it's not Kirby's Pinball Land. Oh god, was that a big mistake? No, it wasn't. It looks like I practically had to hit every single on-off switch I see. And it's gonna take me to the Promised Land. And by Promised Land, I mean just to the right of where I'm currently, too. Closer to the goal tape. Oh, looks like we're gonna make it! <laughs> three. You got a lowly three. Fine by me. The desert, so apparently that's the next world. 
Alright, there we go. So the castle is technically not on the island with the forest. That's a bit strange. Alright, I guess we're going to Hell Freezes again! Is this going to be very similar to the other cave I've been through? Yep! Almost like a level 2 version. That was a bit unexpected to have the same type of level again. All I'm missing is a Yoshi. I said a Yoshi, not a Fire Flower. I mean, I'll take the Fire Flower, but I don't think it'll kill any of the enemies here. Whoa! What's up with that guy? That was way too close. Okay, having these dirt balls on a slope is an extra challenge. Oh god, that one is stuck. Here, I got an idea. Wow! <laughs> no reaction time for that! Like the shells are coming fast and furious, faster than a Dwayne Johnson movie. Of course, it has that Vin Diesel in it. Oh, damn it! Okay, well, this one is not too bad. It's designed well. I can't be surprised about it because Cypher Mer 90 is a pretty good hacker. Challenging? But it's the good kind of challenging as opposed to the cheap kind. You know, the kind that has all the filler and no flavor. Just stuff that makes you chew and chew forever and ever. Amen. That's not the good kind of cheap. Doesn't feel like value at all. This has nice variety. Oh, looks like we're off the island and heading for the castle. It's razor sharp. Razor in quotes, of course. Okay, this background, of course, is from Mario 3 All Stars version. Well, except for this part. And the music is from Final Fantasy V. I still think of Final Fantasy V is definitely one of the top Final Fantasy games in the series. I still think 6 is the best, along with 4, and then I would say 5, then 3, 1, 2... Well, I'm talking about before 7. Of course, like, after 6, I would think... Not 7 is the best, but 9. And then I would probably say 7, and then 10. 12, I'm actually going to give 12 a pretty good score. 11 I never played, so that's already well below since I tried to go for a system that's not really reliable. Just the online style. 8 is pretty low. Well, actually 13, while not great, ranks higher than 8 in my opinion. The thing about 13 that gives it its deserved notoriety is that they're trying to milk that exact Final Fantasy for more than it's worth. It's like 13-2? Come on now. They were coming up with a 13 versus, which would have been nice. But no news of that lately. Might have been scrapped for all I know. And they're trying to come up with a 13-3? I could be wrong. I want to be wrong. But I wouldn't be surprised if I'm right. I'm just saying that after a while, you just want to move on to a new series. Just go back to your roots. Okay, so apparently I cannot even stand it. That's, that's like a thwomp, then. Wait. What the hell did I get hurt by? No, that was a pipe. Okay, I was thinking I was going to get hurt by that, since it's really part of the razor. But I'm just saying, 13 just feels like Final Hallway, rather than Final Fantasy. Very little to explore, which I'm very disappointed by. 12 gave you a lot to explore. That oftentimes led to your demise if you just went to one area that had enemies of a higher level than you. By accident. But it added to the variety. Even though some things were done horribly wrong, like why the hell do I have to kill like dozens of enemies to learn how to wear a hat? You put it on your head! Seriously. But you know what? I did like Final Fantasy XII. Will I LP it? I don't know. I'd prefer to go in order. But if I don't, so be it. 
Besides, I'm not going to play every single Final Fantasy game. Seven? I still haven't decided when I'm going to do it. It's going to take a very long time, though. Even though it's been a long time since I did FF6, like well over a year. Thing is, I don't know FF7 all that well, and therefore I'm holding off on it because I don't want to go through that game knowing jack shit. And then I'll look bad. So, I mean, some people can do a blind LP and be very entertaining, but I don't know if I'll be able to pull that off with my flair. Or lack thereof when it comes to blind LP some of the time. Then again, I do most Mario hacks blind, and I do just fine. Because it's the same style of game. After a while, you just know what to say. You know what you're looking for. Oh, I thought I undershot that jump. Okay, that's what I need to do. Whoa! Some of those grinders are going super fast! Okay, grind is the boss. Looks like I have to use these. And when the grinder goes right into him, it takes damage. Look at those happy faces. Ah, another grinder! It just adds a nice element of challenge. Oh my god, it just waits for the invincibility time for me to get hit. Oh, that's bad. But you know what? We made it through. And that Yoshi Egg is happy. The forest is nearly all chopped down. At least those grinders, uh, for apparently some reason there's an apostrophe, can't cut down any more trees. However, you're a bad, bad person for blowing up a building. At least karma got you back. Ha 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 ha. And Mario's like, yeah, F you too. Okay, we made it to the desert, and there's a secret exit already. Pokey is pissed! Alright, I'm going to stop the video here, and in the next part, we're going to begin World 4. See ya.